There was a Sunday school teacher who gave an assignment to this Sunday school class. Children gathered around. She simply explained, this week, I want you to learn one new thing about Jesus that you didn't know before. Come back next week and tell us. So the next Sunday, the kids gathered around the Sunday school classroom. Teacher said, what did you learn? Susie said, I learned that Jesus was born in a manger. Good for you. Someone else said, ah, I learned that Jesus fed the 5,000. Wonderful. The third little boy stood up, and I learned that Jesus drives a red pickup truck and can't drive at all. <laughs> and the teacher said, well, where'd you learn that? From my dad. We were driving down the highway. A red pickup truck passed us by, and he yelled, Jesus Christ, would you learn how to drive? <laughs> Kids pick up some crazy things, don't they? Well, today we hope to pick up some wonderful things and we learn how to drive through life. As we learned from these wonderful spiritual principles, some key things, key elements for making our life a great success. You see, that's what Scripture is all about. It's our guide for living the way God intended us to live. Our guide for understanding our highest and best and how it unfolds for us in our journey. So we're going to learn how to drive through life in one of the key things, key elements that we can talk about over and over again, and this is the law of expectation. A spiritual law, a spiritual principle, a spiritual promise that talks about the very power of a law of expectation that when we engage the spirit of expectation, something amazing will unfold for us. This is very scriptural as it's talked to us in promise after promise throughout the Old Testament, through the New Testament, echoed over and over again. Now, there was a king who told his uh, fine servant, I appreciate you, I value you so much. I would love to do something great for you. Go out in the land and draw a circle around whatever you'd like to possess, whatever land you'd like to claim is yours, and I'll give it to you. Now, the king thought, surely, this man is not going to drive, draw that big of a circle. How big of a circle can he draw in one day? I'll give him anything that he draws within the circle. The next day, the king came out to find the man had drawn a circle around himself. And the king said, well, is that all you want? Is that it? He said, oh, no. I want everything outside the circle to be given to me. Now, this is a beautiful illustration that calls to us to say, how big is your circle? How big of a circle have you drawn in great expectation? You see, this man blew the king's mind with his power of expectation. I expect to receive. You said it's available. You said it's, uh, uh, the opportunity is there for me. Well, I expect it. And I act out in that kind of expectation that says all things are working together for my good. And I expect it for my highest and best. So let me tell you this as we learn the spiritual practice of expecting or the law, the principle, the promise of expectation at work in our lives that we can just be so thrilled that this law works for us and for our good. Now, one great mistake that many pastors will make is that they may preach a sermon one week and then move on to another sermon, another thought. And many times congregations don't even get it. I want to emphasize this law of expectation and how powerful it is, for it is the essence of our faith. How many of you say, I'm a person of faith? I believe, and I have faith to believe for great things. All the faith in the world, all the believing, if it's not filled with a power of expectation, because you can say, I believe for it, I'm not expecting it. It's like the people who said the pastor invited everyone to come to church to pray for rain. And they all came to this church to gather together for this dynamic service to pray for rain. And the pastor said, y'all need to go home. What do you mean? Why are you sending us home? Because none of you brought an umbrella. So the power of our expectation, you may have a lot of faith, but how about the expectancy that says I act, I live, I do in such a dynamic way that says, I couple it with my faith that, yes, I believe, but I act, I walk, and I live in the way of expecting the greatest things to happen for our lives. 
For Jesus, every time he opened up his mouth to speak, the scriptures record that he was teaching us this spirit of expectation. How about the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount that he spoke of, saying, blessed art thou, happy will you be, in other words, for those who are emptied out in spirit or poor in spirit, meaning you poured out everything, that you are now open and available, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Now, here's the promise. In other words, when you empty yourself out and you open yourself up to the goodness of God, expect to be in the kingdom of heaven. Expect to be in the divine presence. Expect to be in this realm of God. Expect to be in this wonderful space, this place of knowing all of the goodness and the divinity of of the divine within you and how powerful it is because Jesus spoke of it all the time. He said, if you have the faith, of the seed of a mustard seed, and that size, that tiny little bit of faith, you will move mountains, but you have to expect that you're gonna move mountains. You have to have that kind of spirit of expectation in all that you say and you do. Now, here's what we need to learn about these laws of God. We know that God is law and God is love. Two things. Scripture tells us over and over again, God is law and God is love. How God works within our life are through these spiritual laws such as sowing and reaping. We understand spiritual laws that they're there for us to work through. And this is how God manifests and works our great prosperity. We get a little confused and we think that we get prosperity through God's love. It's not through God's love. Prosperity and blessing comes through God's law, working the law, the principles. Because here's the key. We look at someone and says, well, you're really blessed. Look at how you live and how you're dressed and how the car you drive and all your fan- how fabulous you are and how beautiful you are. You're, God must really love you. And then me, I don't have that blessing and I don't have this kind of stuff. So it must mean that God doesn't love me the same way God loves you. But that's not true at all. For scripture says there is no partiality. God doesn't love a wealthy millionaire any more than God loves the poorest of the poor. You see, it is just all in the love is equal and there is no partiality whatsoever. Scripture echoes that over and over again, trying to get across to us. There is no Jew, no Greek, no male, no female. There's no separation. There's no division. There's no partiality. Love is the same for everyone, no matter who you are. Tall, short, gay, straight, Whatever you may be, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, it doesn't matter. The equality is there for everyone in the essence of love. Here's the catch. It's the law that determines our blessings and our prosperity and our willingness to work with the law. These promises, right? It says if you sow, you reap. Now, what if you don't work with that law? You say, well, I just choose not to sow. Do you expect to reap? A lot of us do. We say, "Ah, of course I expect to reap. Where's God's love? Well, God says, I love you. But the law, the spiritual principle says, did you follow the commandment? Did you follow the law? Did you work with the law? Because if you don't, I can't work with you. Do you see that makes sense? In other words, I'm being restricted by your choice. We have the power to choose every single day. And if we choose not to work with the law, well, then you know that the law is not going to work with you. How simple that is. But yet we sometimes get so confused and we think, oh, God's love is going to be there. And God says, I love you very much. And my love says I work through the law. And if you're willing to step out in faith as you believe, so you receive. If you don't believe, will you receive? The law says no. So if you don't have the power of expectation, if you don't have all these things that work within your life, and you may just depend, oh God, but just love me, love me, love me, do these, God says, I do love you. But everything in the scripture is saying, keep my commandments. If you keep my commandments, on and on it goes on. At the very teaching of the scriptures unfolding for us, teaching us this. God's law then decides the prosperity level of our lives or the degree. So when we engage that law, put that law into action, we operate in that law, then blessings unfold for us. How do we know? Let's go to Scripture. It teaches us this. Psalm 112 begins with, Praise the Lord, blessed, or happy, or prosperous, 
is the man or woman who fears or respects would be the better word the very law or the Lord which rules over our life happy you're going to be blessed you're going to be it's the promise now if you expect that these promises really work then you know that this is what's unfolding for you and it goes on to say blessed is this one who greatly delights in God's commandments the spiritual laws and principles when you delight in them when you take joy in them when you put them into operation into your life there's a lot that will come to you, it says, for his or her offspring will be mighty in the land and the generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house and righteousness endures forever. Do you believe it? It's the word of God. And many of you are saying, oh, I'm a firm believer in the word of God. I'm a firm believer in the promises. Really? But I don't want to believe in this one because it just sounds so good. Oh, you're right. That's the goodness of God. The goodness of God says, if you follow through with the very promises, the principles, the law that I've laid down, and you put the law into action, you're guaranteed these things. It's a guarantee for your life. It's like when you enter into a country, you travel to a foreign land. Jim went to Kenya. Someone else uh, that on my Facebook has just recently gone to Paris, my friends. They've all gone to different countries and they're traveling a lot and having a great time. But one of the key things that guarantees their good time is when they obey the laws of the land, right? Well, you can say, wait a minute, I'm in Paris. I'll do whatever I want. Uh, the rule is when in Rome, do as the Romans do. When in Paris, do as the Parisians do. When in Kenya, do as the Kenyans do. Whatever country you're in in America, you follow the laws and you're guaranteed a good time, right? How about when you enter into the kingdom of God? Are you willing to follow the laws? Because the spiritual laws there will guarantee your blessing. When you enter into the realm of God, when you enter into the presence of God, when you come to this wonderful place of fully awareness and you understand these spiritual principles that work in my life, sowing and reaping, faith and expectation, the spirits of generosity, all these things that we put into that are simple promises or laws, really unfold for us our blessings. And God says, I have expectations. I have instructions. I have spiritual laws that I've laid down for you to help you for your goodness. I have uh, sort of divine formulas. You know how it is? In science, there are divine formulas. You know what happens if you add one more part of oxygen to H2O? What do you get? Hydrogen peroxide, there we go. Science major right here. <laughs> Very good. What happens is you're thinking I'm drinking water, but if I add one more part of oxygen to it, I find something that can be dangerous to me. What was once healthy has now changed. See, there's a formula. There's a divine formula in our life. This is how logical the universe is and God is not full of just mystery but logic and intelligence and understanding that we can begin to comprehend that says there are divine plans that have been laid out for us if we understand these laws and put them into action blessing is ours it's inevitable you can't help it it's going to be there for you Oral Roberts once said the greatest secret of my ministry is sowing a seed toward a desired result being willing to sow the seed of expectation, putting into action the law of expectation that what you expect is what you get when you put that into law in your spiritual life. And I found a lot of people sometimes are engaging in these experiences of prayer, but they're not expecting, oh, there's faith that says, I'm going to believe, but I'm not really expecting. You know how people are constantly, they, they constantly say, well, you know, if it doesn't work out, it's okay. And I know you're praying for this. And I know your faith says, I believe for this. But you know, there's always something else. There's always, God may work in another way. And we always use that kind of an ex excuse in our lives to be very fearful of stepping out with such power of expectation. Now, what does the scripture teach us? But we know from the story of Babel, how many of you remember that Old Testament story of those who were gathered together as tribes to build the Tower of Babel? 
What was their goal? Their goal was to build a tower that would rise into heaven, that they might find their way into the heavens. And what does the story unfold? But the Spirit of God says, we want to stop this. Why? Because if you look in the reading, it says, now nothing they have imagined they can do will be impossible for them. Wow. Can you imagine that you're in this place, in this setting, that nothing you imagine that you could do would be impossible? Wow. You could imagine the law of expectation then coming into action, couldn't you? Because you're saying, I believe the scripture says that God recognized that when people began to imagine and believe with such in fervency that they put action to it and began to build. Well, God says, we've got to stop this because anything that they could do could be imaginable, that they imagine is possible for them. They were expecting to reach the heavens. And so their languages were confused and they dispersed across the nations. You see, the whole key thing is here. Are, we are asking the questions, what should I expect? What should I expect then if God is at work in this way? Because I'm imagining great things. What can I expect? Well, you should expect, number one, that all things are going to work together for good. Now, that's really key to our life. Can you imagine every scenario in your life is working together for good? Boy, have I got a story for you. This week, I was changing Robert's bandages. He has stage four cancer, and we dress the wounds every two days just to keep them fresh. And one of our major concerns is that there's no infection in these open wounds. And as I changed the wound, I looked into the wound only to find something crawling around in the ear. Now, this has a little creepy factor I'm going to share with you, but there's, hang with me. When I looked into the ear, it was full of maggots. Maggots. You see, a fly had probably apparently landed on part of his ear, laid some eggs and found warmth, and the larvae crawled under the bandages and the warmth there in the summer day, and the heat there from the body provided a perfect environment for those eggs to hatch. About 150 is what they say. They hatch uh, in one uh, instance when a fly lands and gives this wonderful blessing. And so I'm looking in this wound only to find an ear full of creeping worms swirling around. And I begin to <gasps> gasp. And Robert says, what is it? And I go, and my first thought is, do I tell him? Uh, what do I say that your head is full of maggots? And what a creepy thought that is as you associate maggots with the worst case scenario, thinking that possibly this is rotten, this is death, this is decay, this is dying. All these kind of images come into your mind. And I just said, well, <laughs> uh, you know, maybe Russia has bugged you. <laughs> uh, uh, well, you're going to be my maggot faggot, honey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I didn't say any of those. I just was like <gasps> panicking. Uh, honey, what's bugging you? <laughs> no, uh, I didn't say that either. I just said, honey, let's go. We got to get to the hospital. We jumped in the car and headed to the emergency room. And they ushered him in and, the, you know, all this is going through the back of my mind thinking, what does, what is going on? And we walk in there and the doctor says, first of all, relax. All things work together for good is what I heard the Lord speaking. He said, this is not a bad thing. Because you see, these are nature's cleansers and they're cleansing up the wound. And then I remembered our number one prayer was that there be no infection. Isn't that what we were praying for? And to ensure that there's no infection, the universe sent some wonderful maggots, some housekeeping critters to crawl in and to clean out the wound. The doctor said to me, do you realize this is probably the cleanest his wound has ever been? And what an amazing moment to think that which you feared the most, that which you thought might be the worst case scenario is now turning out to be your greatest blessing and an answer to your prayer and to the spirit of your expectation. All things work together for good. Well, if we could awaken to that, we might look through every scenario and see, wait a minute, this might be my best. Not my worst, but my best moment. And so the spirit of expectation comes into play within our lives as we realize that we can expect all things to work together for good. 
the woman who came to Jesus with an issue of blood looking for healing. She was not on Jesus' schedule. It was not like, you know, hey, uh, yeah, there's a woman popping by. She's coming in and she needs some healing. Instead, she came with a spirit of expectation and said, if I could just touch the hem of your garment, I know I'm going to feel this kind of miraculous healing within my body. That's expectation. How about the, those who gathered with the lame man and helped him and assisted him by carrying him to the house where Jesus was teaching? It was standing room only. There's no way to get him. No way that they would get this man to see Jesus. Instead, they call up, crawl up on the roof, remove the, the, the tiles of the roof and lower the man down into Jesus. I don't think Jesus was expecting him either. But the man was expecting a healing. You look in each one of these stories, each one that where the invitation is for our life to be that every day we wake up coming to, into this world expecting. I have a law of expectation at work within my life that I walk expecting the miraculous, expecting the good, expecting everything to work together in the strangest of ways that whatever they may be to unfold for my highest and best. Now, when the doctors had finished with Robert, they said, we're going to send you home. After nine hours of deliberation, they said, you know, there's a few more maggots in there and we're going to give it to you to take them out. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I said, show me what, I mean, you know, I'm not a surgeon. I don't really. And so they began to show me how to cleanse the wound, how to treat with hydroperoxide, how to grab the little maggots, do a little maggot fishing uh, in his ear to try to get it all out. Sounds kind of gross. But uh, we went home and I followed the doctor's orders. And the first day, I got nine. I felt like a real fisherman. I got a real trophy there. There was one left stubborn and I could see him inside his ear growing and getting bigger as he began to do the house cleaning work that he was called to do. And it was bothering Robert because we make light of this. It was very painful and he could hear them in his ear and he could hear that last one chewing away inside his ear, the sound there. And I just said, I think that's been enough. We've got enough house cleaning going on. It's time to get this last one out. And we're going to pray right now. And in this moment, we're going to have the power of expectation that I feel like I'm Jesus calling Lazarus to come out of that tomb. And I'm going to speak to that little uh, larvae, that little maggot in there. You need to come out right now. Stubborn as he was stuck in there, I tried every kind of method I could to lure him out. It wasn't good, but I just said, we're going to pray right here and now. I prayed. I reached over to grab a Q-tip, and there he was. He was already out and grabbed it. I believe that may sound like the creepiest illustration of divine promise, but I believe in the power of expectation that works in practical, simple, everyday journey of your life. It's that real. It's that genuine. It's a spiritual law. This is how God works as we put these things into action. I want to remember, remind you of this one thing, that Jesus encouraged doubters to get out of the room. There are several circumstances where Jesus said, you know, doubters need to leave. Those who question need to be gone. Why? Because they diminish the very fragrance of expectation that's there. I'm going to tell you, there's a fragrance. Can you smell the expectation? Can you smell the faith that's in action? Can you smell the power of believing? Can you smell it that says, I know that I know that I know something great is unfolding for me? And if there are doubters in that room, they just sort of diminish that energy and that wonderful fragrance of expectation. So I want to encourage you in the spirit of your journey of expecting the highest and best, if there are those around you who are doubters, step away from them or ask them not to participate or just say this isn't for you. Because the power of God's promise at work need not be diminished in any way. There are three keys I want to point out to you. One, I'll never receive from God what I want. I'll only receive from God what I truly expect. Because if you're not expecting it, you can want all you want. The key is you're only going to receive what you expect. And if you're not expecting it, how are you going to receive it? Number two, what I do reveals if I'm truly expecting because if you're not like that congregation who brings umbrellas, if you're like that congregation who doesn't bring umbrellas, then there's no sense in really saying that you're expecting because 
your actions do not prove that which you believe. God is glorified, magnified, and satisfied when God finds a believer using their faith wrapped up in expectation. This is the way we bring glory to God. I shared this story of Robert. Sounds creepy and kind of, kind of strange and a little bit like, well, do you want to share all that grossness? And I said, because I got to tell you, through it all, the presence of God was unfolding for me what I termed miraculous. I began to expect the good. I began to hear the good. I began to see the good. I began to see the hand of God. And in summary, I had to say, maybe those wonderful maggots were my answer to prayer. And who am I to degrade them to say God's gift and blessing was not good? But there's good in all things. And that God in divine way was unfolding for us something beautiful and miraculous. The story in the Bible goes on and on, the stories of faith and expectation. How about Jesus addressing those who were fishing all night long and they caught nothing? And then Jesus, in the morning light, calls them to cast their net on the other side. And you can imagine their expression. Really, Jesus? Really? Do you realize we've been doing this all night? We're fishermen. You're not a fisherman. We've been in the boat all the time. You've been sleeping. We've been up all night. And now you're saying go back again and put your net on the other side. Really? I mean, come on. You can imagine their emotions as they're thinking, but this was the change that Jesus was inviting them, that they might be caught up in a spirit of expectation. This time when you go out, go out expecting, and when you cast your net, the next, this time when you go out, you'll receive. And what happened in that expectation? As they rode out one more time, cast their nets. They had so many fish that they caught, they needed to have people come and help them bring in the catch. You see, this is the big difference in our life when the law of expectation is at work in our lives. The best people in my life are the people who help me expect a miracle. I'm going to tell you that. You don't have some miracle helpers around you? Go get some. Because this church is full of them. I will be there for you. I, my whole purpose as your pastor, as your shepherd, as your coach, is to let you know that I'm here to help you uh, expect a miracle. And expect them. Why? Because this should be our everyday journey, our everyday experience. God working in and through and around and always for us. You need someone to help you, inspire you to expect something great. Not to give up, not to quit, but to expect. And Jesus inspired them saying, go one more time. Go, I know you've been all night long. Go one more time and cast out on the other side. And when he did, he helped them practice the law of expectation in their lives. I want you to expect open doors in the journey of your life. I want you to expect healing and wholeness and blessing and prosperity blessing coming to you in many ways. I want you to expect that you go in for that interview that you're going to get the job. I want you to live in this kind of expectation on a day-to-day -day journey that you expect the law of God is working for me. Say that with me. The law of God is working for me. That's the principles that are there for us. And I want you to know that God supplies what you need when you're willing to step out and begin to sow. You read that scripture. It's on the back of your bulletin. Take it home with you. Check it out. Because this, again, is another one of God's promises for us in this. It says that God who supplies the seed to the sower. Okay? And you may say, wait, wait, wait. I'd, I'll be willing to sow, but I don't have any seeds. What does the scripture say first? When you're willing to sow, the seed will be there. And you all are waiting. Well, I'm waiting for the seed to arrive, and then I'll start sowing. You see, that's the step of faith that you take first. Because people want to say, well, what do I do? I pray, and then I, I believe, and then I'm going to wait. No, I pray, I believe, and then I'm going to move. We say we treat our doubt. We treat and move our feet. 
We pray and begin to move. As you begin to say, I'm here sowing, God provides the seeds for you. As you're willing to say, I am willing to be the sower, the seeds will come to you. This is the very promise of God. This is the very spiritual law for our lives. It says, now God who supplies the seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed. That's your text for today. And will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous at any occasion. In other words, wow, do you understand this principle of how to live your life when you are expecting? In other words, I'm going to the garden to sow and I know the seeds will be there. I'm stepping out in faith and I know the miracle is waiting there already for me. I have this kind of expectation that I get in line to buy my ticket even though I don't have the money knowing that somehow the money is going to be there and it's going to be provided. Wow, that's expectation. I know it's going to rain so I bring an umbrella with me everywhere I go because I'm praying for rain and I'm already expecting. When we're that kind of people, we're scriptural people, we're Bible-based people, we're the promise of God people, we're the law of God people and how important this is for our lives. So in your bulletin today, you're gonna to find an insert. It is this prayer of affirmation of a law of expectation within our lives. I printed it out for you, I'd like you to take it home with you, but we're gonna read it together out loud right here and now. Begins with, I am making a change in my thinking. Do you, no, let's see, where's, I got in my notes here. I may need that, let me have what you have. <laughs> Right now, I guess. <laughs> I edited it before I printed it. So that's right. Let's read it together, everyone out loud. Right now, I recognize that I have the power to turn off the voices that keep bringing up doubts. I now embrace the very promises, the very laws of God that unlock my expectations. This is my choice. I am making a change in my thinking. I am now living in the law of expectation. This moment is the beginning of a new unfolding of my God-intended prosperity. I know that as I live in expectation, the seeds that I need to sow are coming to me, for this is the law of God at work. I'm not expecting the harvest to come without sowing first. I'm expecting uncommon seed to enter my life, and I can plant, and I can sow knowing that then my harvest of blessing is mine. So I now begin a new life of sowing with expectation. And so it is. Uncommon seed is coming to you as you expect it. In other words, this wonderful, unusual, miraculous blessings coming to our lives when we open our lives with a spirit of expectation that we expect the good, see the good, know that all things are working together for good, and see it unfold before our lives. It is this purpose that we live, for we live to bring glory to God. And the glory is seen through us as we walk, talk, live every single day in the spirit of expectation. And when we do, the world around says, wow, what you're expecting came to you. What you were believing for happened for you. And in the most strangest of ways, in uncommon seeds. Yes, I have to say, I prayed for Robert that there be no infection. And you want to talk about uncommon seeds. Maggots are not necessarily the way I would have thought. How many of you prayed for healing through maggots? How many of you prayed for, I mean, that is not the common prayer, is that? That's not your day-to-day -day journey. But the Spirit of God knows what you have need of and works in divine ways. And this is where the surgeon said, these maggots know how to clean house far better than I do. And I surrender to divine nature. Wow. God knows better than you. Or I know what the miracle and how the miracle should happen. Our job is to just live in the law of expectation. Knowing that uncommon, unusual, maybe slightly bizarre, crazy ways may be the way workings of God to provide for you that which you are expecting. Amen.